I met this girl when I was 10 years old and what I loved most, she had so much soul. Hey everybody, it's Old School Heart back with another cultural conversation for you guys. So first things first, if you are not a subscriber to this channel, go ahead and hit the subscription button. Uh, I usually post videos late Sunday night, early sun uh, Monday morning. I also post them again for missing black women, missing black girls called Where My Girls At late Wednesday night, early Thursday morning. And so that's when um, my videos come out if you if you are subscribed and you hit the notification button you will be able to view those videos first go ahead and like this video as well also share this video to all other social platforms and then leave me a comment we've had some great discussions here uh, especially about the Allen versus Pharaoh documentary that I did if you have not watched that that has been posted also, you know, talking about the missing black women, um, just their cases, the story behind their cases, that's been quite informative as well. And so go back and look at those videos if you have not already. I did a really, really good video. Uh, that video was on Aisha, uh, sorry, it was on Aisha Degree. Uh, I always get her name wrong. It's Aisha Degree. Her story is quite telling. It's still puzzling to me. So go back and watch that video if you have not already. It has been quite a week um, after we've gotten over the craze and the rave of having our stimulus checks and what we will do with them, what we will not do with them. We've moved on to scandalous um scandalous gossip in uh the social media uh from uh people cheating on their spouses to celebrity sons airing out their father it has been quite a week but you know here we keep our discussions informative we talk about what affects our community how we can help our community things that we can improve upon and so today's video is no different today we're going to be talking about um Tamika Mallory versus Samira Rice. Um, if you haven't heard that story, I'll give you some details behind it. But that's today's topic. Let's talk. So uh, Tamika Mallory versus Samira Rice, right? So a lot of you may already be aware of this story. Some of you guys may not be aware of this story. So let's start at the beginning, right? So uh, the Grammys uh, came on a couple of weeks ago. Not a real big fan of the Grammys. I did a video about uh, the Grammys last year, actually. I did a video about um, uh, some things, some um, issues that I have with it. So I'm not a big watcher of the Grammys at all. Uh, so um, Lil Baby did a performance at the Grammys that was uh, really about social justice, Black Lives Matter. Uh, and on his performance, uh, Tamika Mallory appeared and did a poem or some type of a poetry. Now, I'm not very familiar with Lil Baby. I'm a little bit older. Uh, and so, <laughs> I don't know everybody. So, um, I did get a chance to look a little bit at that performance, uh, specifically Tamika Mallory's part. I thought she was very, very beautiful that night. But um, uh, this is the reason why there is an issue. So we have Samir Rice, who is the mother of Tamir Rice, the 12-year-old uh, boy who was shot by police um, while playing in a park with a toy gun. Uh, so this is his mom. Um, she uh, actually, you know, had a lot to say about um, Tamika Mallory appearing on uh, the Grammys uh, during Little Baby's performance. Um, and so I wanna read that verbatim for you so that you uh, understand, you know, or you know exactly what uh, Miss Rice has said. So she said, look at this cloud chaser. Did she lose something in this fight? I don't think so. That's the problem, they take us for a joke. That's why we never have justice for shit like this. Um, she went on further to say on her social media that um, that she did not really care uh, for the performance. She said, fuck a Grammy when my son is dead. So a lot of people felt, you know, Samira Rice uh, sentiments. A lot of people felt Samira Rice sentiments. And they were also wondering, you know, why at this point she was coming out with it because it, you know, even though um, 
even though I know that she said quite a bit throughout the years, it was still kind of random for her to, you know, say this uh, out loud on social media um, and especially against Tamika Mallory. Now, um, Tamika Mallory, if you guys do not know, she's worked heavily um, for social justice or for justice um, uh, specifically with the uh, Breonna Taylor case. Uh, she relocated to Louisville, Kentucky to do the work. Um, she's brought other celebrities into the fold so that they can get justice for Breonna Taylor. We know that uh, as of right now, that hasn't happened, but she did do a lot of work with that. So a lot of people, um, even though they felt what Samir Rice was saying, and agreed with her that um, that this performance was kind of doing too much. There were a lot of people who felt some type of way about what uh, Samir Rice said against um, against uh, uh, Tamika Mallory. And of course, when you know you feel some type of way, hit dogs start to holler, right? So one of the first people who uh, decided to stand up or stand for. Uh, stand with um, Tamika Mallory was Sean King, who has his own issues with integrity um, as a self-proclaimed activist himself. You know, uh, he spoke up for Tamika Mallory. So you also have my son, who used to be a big rapper, um, who uh, also does a podcast with Tamika Mallory and works heavily with her. He also um, came out and spoke um, in favor of Tamika Mallory and, you know, tried to explain that, you know, she has been doing the work and has been doing it for years. She's a stand up woman. He came out and said something. Roland Martin also came out, um, even though he consistently puts his foot in his mouth. Roland Martin, who has had his own issues and um, at, a couple of weeks ago, you know, he got his ass chewed out for trying to come at a 21 year old black man that was really doing the work. But um, he also spoke a, a, in defense of Tamika Mallory as well. Um, immaturely to me, you know, he alluded that she would debate anyone about how she works, about the work of social um, activism on his platform, the Roland Martin show that he has on YouTube. Uh, he said that she will debate anybody and he would actually put that on his platform. Immature, but he came, you know, to stand with her. Um, so now Tamika, she really didn't uh, say anything at first. You know, she kind of made some subliminal posts. You know, it's, it's hard work. I've been doing the work. You know, no one can tell you what you've been doing. Nobody has seen you shooting in the gym, that type of stuff. Um... But she didn't come out and really uh, directly say anything against Samir uh, Rice. Um, so uh, a couple of, uh, I believe last week, early last week, um, she did a podcast uh, with my son and she did actually um, begin to discuss uh, that Facebook post that Samir Rice wrote. And she said basically that she understood uh, Samir Rice's concerns. And that aside from doing a roll call of all the victims of uh, police shootings and brutality, uh, she did not use uh, Tamir Rice's name in anything that she's done before. Um, now, she did say that she was hurt by the post because of some of the remarks that Samir Rice made, but that she would not be divisive and uh, vindictive towards um Samir Rice, you know, um, and some of the other people that were standing for her kind of was uh, a little bit divisive um, when talking about Samir Rice. This is somebody who lost their child um, in um, in 2014. This is someone who lost their child to a cop. Uh, and some people were not very um selective with words that they use as they stood for Tamika Mallory. You know, um, a lot of them, what I, I saw, uh, like Sean King, like some other people were saying that it's not, um, it's that Tamir Rice doesn't have an issue with um, Tamika Mallory per se. She has an issue with white supremacy. 
And that is the real issue that her struggle is not with Tamika. Tamika hasn't done anything wrong, but the real problem and the real issue is with white supremacy. And um, we've heard that actually with the whole Asian um, hate thing, you know, um, when people were coming for black people, telling them, why are you not taking a stand with Asian people? Um, you know, our fight isn't with Asian people and our fight is really with, you know, white supremacy. So people have been using that as a cape at this point. And so they were using that to disagree with Samir Rice, right? So, you know, after everybody started to uh, stand with, um, with Tamika Mallory and write different posts and uh, say certain things towards Samir Rice, um, Samira Rice, uh, some of the, uh, some organizers started to stand with her. And one in particular that I love and follow quite a bit is Deshaun, Harris, who's been an activist, Harrison, who's been an activist in Georgia for quite some time. Um, they all um, rallied around um, Samira Rice uh, to her, assist her and um, some of her concerns with Black Lives Matter, with Tamika Mallory, uh, uh, Sean King, and other people who have been uh, front runners in uh, the movement for quite some time. Um, she listed a couple of things that she demands. Uh, I'm gonna post it here for you guys to see it. But she, along with these organizers, made a list of things um, uh, and posted a statement of what they're looking uh, for as it relates to these people um, uh, using the names of uh, Tamir Rice and all of the other um, uh, people and children that have been slain by cops, uh, what they're looking for um, as these activists move forward in the movement and use their names in order to, you know, do social events, platforms, go on television shows and different things like that. And so um, that was put out in social media about a week ago as well uh, that, you know, better articulates uh, what Samira Rice was trying to convey uh, when she initially wrote that Facebook post. Uh, and then um, it was said later on this week that uh, she was requesting a sit down with the same people. Um, it, there is a tweet um, that was posted or an official statement that was posted uh, about um, having a sit down with Sean King, Tamika Mallory, uh, some people from the Black Lives Matter, Matter movement. Um, and I believe that they are going to actually have a sit down. Now, I believe that uh, Saturday or uh, Friday of the past week, uh, she did actually get a sit down with one of those people from one of those organizations. And so hopefully, you know, we hear more about that and what was said during that meeting. Uh, but uh, it looks like they are trying to uh, reason with her, talk with her. Um, and she also is trying to uh, convey to them some of the sentiments that some of the people um, have expressed to her um, that uh, are a part of this uh, group that nobody wants to be in. And I always call it the group that nobody wants to be in because nobody wants their child uh, shot by a cop and then there to be no justice at all. So this is a specific group, unfortunately, that nobody wants to be in. Now, keep in mind, we do have Mike Brown's father um, who also came out publicly against the Black Lives Matter organization. Um, he too is asking for compensation because Mike Brown's um, Mike Brown uh, initiated a movement. You know that Ferguson was the place where it all kind of started, uh, and where we heard Black Lives Matter, um, and where the protests went on, um, where uh, real uh, activism for some people started. And Mike Brown is over it. Mike Brown's father is over it. And he is just asking for compensation for them continuously using his son's name, um, uh, them continuously profiting off of his son's name. And so it looks like there's a lot of people 
um, men in particular, I think the fathers in particular, and that is a whole nother discussion. There are a lot of fathers in the movement who are really at their wits end with, uh, you know, how social justice is going about and, um, keeping their sons and, and their daughters names alive and still, you know, moving forward for, uh, justice and doing real, real work with those that they live in the community with, not these people that we always see on TV. Uh, uh, there are a lot of fathers who have a lot of issues with, um, these people in the, uh, in the front run, um, right now. And so Mike Brown is one of them. Um, so, you know, to, uh, Samira Rice is not alone now. However, there are other parents in the movement um, who really uh, are in favor of Tamika Mallory. Uh, we do have Breonna Taylor, of course, whose family uh, most definitely came out in support of Tamika Mallory. And that's because she did a lot of her work there. You know, you also have Sabrina Fuller, the mother of Tra Trayvon Martin, who came out in support of Tamika um, Mallory and that's fine. You know, there will be people who feel like that the work that she's doing is okay. And there will be people who, you know, are questioning the authenticity of her activism. It's okay on both sides to have that. So around this weekend as well, we have, uh, Samira Rice, um, who did a live with some of the community organizers that she's now working with, including uh, Deshaun Harrison, who I absolutely love. If you are not following him, follow Deshaun Harrison. He talks about um, black body, fat phobia, and different things like that. Really, really a great young mind uh, to follow. But she did a live this week, and uh, she really talked about how um, it was really difficult working with these um, these organizers, right? These people like Tamika Mallory, Sean King, uh, people like that, right? She talked about how it was really hard to work with them because she felt like they felt like she didn't fit the description of an ideal parent. And what I mean by that is an ideal parent in the media. She didn't have that model presentation that they expect for the parents to have, you know, like uh, Jordan. Um, I can't think of Jordan's uh, mother's name, but she uh, lives in Georgia right now. She's a politician like uh, his mother. Um, the, uh, Jordan was a young man that was shot at the gas station. Um, or even uh, Trayvon Martin's parents, how they present themselves, Sabrina Fuller and her um, uh, ex-husband, um, how they present themselves. She said that, you know, she uh, she felt like they didn't um, really like um, how she presented herself out to the media. She was really raw and uncut. She didn't have this um, this media personification uh, that was needed to, you know, bring her to social platforms and to take her around to social platforms, fighting for justice for her son Tamir. She just didn't have it. She didn't have what people would consider coof, right? She had no coof. And um, she said it made it really difficult for her to work with um, these activists because they didn't know how to put her around in the media. They didn't know how to present her because she was like, she was like, I want revenge. I want that cop to go to jail. I don't, I want bloodshed. She was saying a lot of things and she was cussing and she made it known that she was upset. And so she said that a lot of these activists, when they first came in, they were really gung ho about helping her and different things like that but then very much separated themselves from her as well uh, to the point where she didn't know what was going on. They pretty much took over the media attention uh, surrounding her son and the case and everything like that and left her to herself. And, you know, this is really, really real because this is not just activism. We're talking about somebody that at night when she cuts off her TV, when she cuts off all the lights and it's just her by herself in her room, she thinks about her 12 year old son that was killed by a cop for no damn reason at all. And I think that her issue within all of this with these people is that they don't understand that, you know, and Tamir, 
can come off as um, marketing more so than a person that literally lost his life. Um, and that's hurtful for her, for her. And that's hurtful for people like Mike Brown. You know, if you get to go around the United States, do these interviews and these press conferences, and they're flying you out uh, to different hotels, you know, they're paying for you to appear on CNN and different things like that. And you're bringing up their kids' names, but there is no justice being done. There is a problem with that. You know, there is a problem with that. And so, um, you know, she explained that during that live, you know, just how uh, she needed some assistance in going about um, articulating herself a little bit better and having people around her that really, really wanted to uh, do the work, that really wanted to organize, you know. And um, it really just brings me to um, the discussion on Tamika Mallory, what it really looks like to be an activist, you know, what it really looks like in this society that we have now that is really, really media driven, right? We have a society that's really, really, uh, social media driven, what it looks like to, uh, really be an activist at this time, you know, and I actually want to ask you guys, what, what do you think? it looks like to be an activist at this time. I think that uh, it was a matter of time anyway before people started to question the integrity of all of these activists. You know, um, Tamika is not the first to be questioned. Many activists have, have been questioned. We already talked about Sean King. Sean King is highly criticized and questioned because of his financial records um, and also his disrespectful behavior toward women and other organizers and community activists, they've been highly critical of his behavior. And there is a reason for that. You know, there is a reason for that. So it's not going to be different for Tamika. It's not going to be different. I don't care how many times she marches. I don't care how many protests she has. People will question the validity of her integrity and her character. Um, and we knew this is this was going to happen because of how, how highly publicized she was during the Breonna Taylor, um, uh, Breonna Taylor fight, you know, uh, uh, being down there in Louisville and fighting and getting put in jail and, you know, having all of these other women um, come down there and support her. These really, um, you know, celebrity black women coming down there to support her. We knew that, you know, people would question the validity of her character. Um, now, black people, you know, have a reason to question anyone's intention to not be as trusting considering the betrayal we have dealt with for years since the beginning of time we've we've dealt with betrayal in our own community. Let's not even get on white supremacy and what it's done to us and, you know, Hoover and all of that in our own community, we've dealt with a lot of betrayal, you know, from FBI informants that uh, took the bag and uh, ratted or sold some of our black organizations out like the Black Panther Party. You know, we even just had that movie, uh, Judas and the Black Messiah, even though that that's a sort of a different case. It still has a familiar ring to it. You know, this betrayal of um P, uh, black people who are progressing towards working towards our freedom at all costs and the people that sell them out for a bag or for their own own um own celebrity or their own height uh we've had that happen before you know let's let's not even go on you know the, the slaves you know there were slaves that told on other slaves when they were trying to uh, go to their freedom. And, you know, because of that, those people weren't able to be free. You know, those people were beaten, killed, hung, um, all of that. And so we've dealt with, um, we've dealt with a lot of people who have betrayed us. And because of that, you know, we are not trusting and we have a reason not to be trusting. We have a reason to question, um, people's sincerity as it relates to progressing our uh, justice claims and our freedom. And also we have to ask ourselves is, you know, what uh, is what these so-called activists doing pushing justice forward anyway? 
you know, or are they creating or are we as a society creating social activist superstars? So if the focus becomes the person in front of the movement instead of the people affected, then there is a reason to question the activists, right? There, there's a reason to question that particular activism. So um, we can take a look at um, Tamika Mallory's uh, Grammy performance, right? Um, let's take a look at that. What seeks more justice, Tamika appearing on the Grammys or uh, Tamika um, going to a, a, a judge's house that's directly involved in the Breonna Taylor case um, and asking for justice, what is more effective? Because let's think about this. Let's be really, really, really um, real here. The reality is who's looking at a little baby performance anyway? You know what I'm saying? Not necessarily like who's looking at a little baby performance and thinking, wow, white supremacy has to end. Who's doing that? You know, when she appeared on the Grammy and she did that poem, is it really going to spark a white person to be like, you're right. I need to be way more on it. Uh, I need to stand up to white supremacy. I need to denounce it in my family. I need to denounce it publicly. I mean, how does this really like, is the work really going to come from appearing on that? Not to mention it came out this week that she's doing a commercial for Cadillac. And let's just be honest. You, we all know that Cadillac don't give a damn about black people. <laughs> this is a luxury company ran off of capitalism. And because they're going to sling a few dollars to the NAACP, you know, she does a video for them. And so it really, really, it really doesn't look right. You know, and I don't know Tamika Mallory. I don't follow her very much. I'm pretty sure that she may have a sincerity to her. You know, a lot of people have said a lot about her in these last couple of weeks. Um, especially, I did not know that she was um, Al Sharpton's pro protege and that he pretty much trained her to be an activist. We have our own issues with Al Sharpton. You know, um, he was somebody that we loved quite a bit at the beginning. But then next thing you know, we started to realize that we would see him a lot in these high profile um, social justice, social justice, black cases. He would disappear when the cameras came on. And so a lot of people have questioned Al Sharpton and his intentions. And so to hear that she's a protege of his is, is damaging, but it is what it is. Um, so, you know, uh, my, my whole thing is not to question, like I said, her, validity as an activist because the reality is we need to have a bigger conversation about what activism is what it looks like today um who do we model uh, activism at, at or uh, after um um how do we effectively activate those are a lot of questions that need to be had in our community and so i'm just going to ask you guys what does activism look like in your community who do who's a model example for you and why um and if tamika mallory is one of them explain to me why she is i uh really am split on uh, both ends of it i can see where Tamika feels like the things that she's done, uh, the steps that she's made has have been progressive to the social justice experience and to progress progressing social justice. Um, and I can see where Tamir Rice is like, it's becoming more of a marketing tool. My son's name is becoming more so of a way to get money, to do interviews, um, and I'm not feeling that because I literally lost a child. And I even thought about that. Even, you know, putting uh, Tamir Rice on a T-shirt and selling it and the shirts that have his name on it. That's got to be hard for the parents. That's got to be super hard for all of the parents who have to see that. Of course, on the birthdays and the deaths, it's okay to reflect on the life of these kids. But I know that it probably is extremely hard to see uh, and hear your son's name and know that nothing has been done in regards to 
uh, his case, the killer, um, and um, and seeing um, real justice being done, you know. Uh, and so I've thought about that. I've thought about, you know, sometimes we unintentionally think that we're doing the right thing. And a lot of times we don't know the effect that we have on the people that are directly involved. And I think Samira Rice's mom is at a place where she's like, I'm over it. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of hearing my baby's name. And they're literally, there's nothing being done. But yet people are making money. i will putting my baby on t-shirts, putting my baby on pins and selling his name. You know, uh, that's hard for her, especially because she ain't receiving none of the money for it. And so that is today's cultural conversation. Weigh in how you feel about uh, this disagreement. Um, do you think anything will come from the sit down that they'll have? And what changes do you think will be made because of it? So this is Old School Heart. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. Please like, comment, and share. Also, um, where my girl is at, episode five will be on this week. I make. I'm not excited, but I really um, have been researching this young lady and I'm really um, amped to tell her story to you guys and let you guys know more about this young lady and how you can help. So this is Old School Heart. Hope you have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.